Mesoamerica, Wikipedia article audio. Mesoamerica is an important historical region and cultural area in the Americas, extending from approximately central Mexico through Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, and northern Costa Rica, and within which pre-Columbian societies flourished before the Spanish colonization of the Americas in the 15th and 16th centuries. It is one of six areas in the world where ancient civilization arose independently, and the second in the Americas along with Norte Chico in present-day northern coastal Peru. Etymology and Definition Geography Cultural Subareas Topography Bodies of Water Biodiversity Chronology and culture Paleo Indian Archaic Preclassic slash formative Preclassic gallery Classic Early classic Early classic gallery Late classic Late classic gallery Terminal classic Terminal Classic Gallery Post-Classic Post-Classic Gallery General Characteristics Subsistence Political Organization Economy Common Characteristics of Mesoamerican Culture Architecture As a Cultural Area Mesoamerica is defined by a mosaic of cultural traits developed and shared by its indigenous cultures. Beginning as early as 7000 BC, the domestication of cacao, maize, beans, tomato, squash and chili, as well as the turkey and dog, caused a transition from Palea Indian hunter-gatherer tribal grouping to the organization of sedentary agricultural villages. In the subsequent formative period, agriculture and cultural traits such as a complex mythological and religious tradition, a vigesimal numeric system, and a complex calendric system, a tradition of ball playing, and a distinct architectural style, were diffused through the area. Also in this period, Villages began to become socially stratified and develop into chiefdoms with the development of large ceremonial centers, interconnected by a network of trade routes for the exchange of luxury goods, such as obsidian, jade, cacao, cinnabar, spondylus shells, hematite, and ceramics. While Mesoamerican civilization did know of the wheel and basic metallurgy, Neither of these technologies became culturally important. Calendrical systems Writing systems Among the earliest complex civilizations was the Almec culture, which inhabited the Gulf Coast of Mexico and extended inland and southwards across the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. Frequent contact and cultural interchange between the early Olmec and other cultures in Chiapas, Guatemala, and Oaxaca laid the basis for the Mesoamerican cultural area. All this was facilitated by considerable regional communications in ancient Mesoamerica, especially along the Pacific coast. Arithmetic Food, Medicine, and Science this formative period saw the spread of distinct religious and symbolic traditions, as well as artistic and architectural complexes. In the subsequent pre-classic period, complex urban polities began to develop among the Maya, with the rise of centers such as El Mirador, Calac Mull, and Tikal, and the Zapotec at Monte Alban. During this period, the first true Mesoamerican writing systems were developed in the AP Olmec and the Zapotec cultures, and the Mesoamerican writing tradition reached its height in the classic Maya hieroglyphic script. 
Mesoamerica is one of only three regions of the world where writing is known to have independently developed. In central Mexico, the height of the Classic period saw the ascendancy of the city of Teotihuacan, which formed a military and commercial empire whose political influence stretched south into the Maya area and northward. Upon the collapse of Teotihuacan around AD 600, competition between several important political centers in central Mexico, such as Cochicalco and Cholula, ensued. At this time during the AP Classic period, the Nahua peoples began moving south into Mesoamerica from the north, and became politically and culturally dominant in central Mexico as they displaced speakers of Otomanguin languages. During the early post-classic period, central Mexico was dominated by the Toltec culture, Oaxaca by the Mistec, and the lowland Maya area had important centers at Chichen Itza and Mayapan. Towards the end of the post-classic period, the Aztecs of central Mexico built a tributary empire covering most of central Mesoamerica. The distinct Mesoamerican cultural tradition ended with the Spanish conquest in the 16th century. Over the next centuries, Mesoamerican indigenous cultures were gradually subjected to Spanish colonial rule. Aspects of the Mesoamerican cultural heritage still survive among the indigenous peoples who inhabit Mesoamerica, many of whom continue to speak their ancestral languages and maintain many practices harking back to their Mesoamerican roots. The term Mesoamerica literally, Middle America in Greek is defined as the area that is home to the Mesoamerican civilization, which comprises a group of peoples with close cultural and historical ties. The exact geographic extent of Mesoamerica has varied through time as the civilization extended north and south from its heartland in southern Mexico. The term was first used by the German ethnologist Paul Kirchhoff, who noted that similarities existed among the various pre-Columbian cultures within the region that included southern Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, El Salvador, western Honduras, and the Pacific lowlands of Nicaragua and northwestern Costa Rica. In the tradition of cultural history, the prevalent archaeological theory of the early to middle 20th century, Kirchhoff defined this zone as a cultural area based on a suite of interrelated cultural similarities brought about by millennia of inter- and interregional interaction. Mesoamerica is recognized as a near prototypical cultural area and the term is now fully integrated in the standard terminology of pre-Columbian anthropological studies. Conversely, the sister terms Eredo America and Oasis America, which refer to northern Mexico and the western United States, respectively, have not entered into widespread usage. Some of the significant cultural traits defining the Mesoamerican cultural tradition are Located on the Middle American Isthmus joining North and South America between CA 10 degrees and 22 degrees northern latitude, Mesoamerica possesses a complex combination of ecological systems, topographic zones, and environmental contexts. A main distinction groups these different niches into two broad categories, the lowlands and the altiplanos, or highlands. In the low-lying regions, subtropical and tropical climates are most common, as is true for most of the coastline along the Pacific and Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea. The highlands show much more climatic diversity, ranging from dry tropical to cold mountainous climates, the dominant climate is temperate with warm temperatures and moderate rainfall. The rainfall varies from the dry Oaxaca and North Yucatan to the humid southern Pacific and Caribbean lowlands. Several distinct subregions within Mesoamerica are defined by a convergence of geographic and cultural attributes. These subregions are more conceptual than culturally meaningful, 
and the demarcation of their limits is not rigid. The Maya area, for example, can be divided into two general groups, the lowlands and highlands. The lowlands are further divided into the southern and northern Maya lowlands. The southern Maya lowlands are generally regarded as encompassing northern Guatemala, southern Campeche, and Quintana Roo in Mexico, and Belize. The northern lowlands cover the remainder of the northern portion of the Yucatan Peninsula. Other areas include central Mexico, west Mexico, the Gulf Coast lowlands, Oaxaca, the southern Pacific lowlands, and southeast Mesoamerica. There is extensive topographic variation in Mesoamerica ranging from the high peaks circumscribing the Valley of Mexico and within the central Sierra Madre Mountains to the low flatlands of the northern Yucatan Peninsula. The tallest mountain in Mesoamerica is Pico de Orizaba, a dormant volcano located on the border of Puebla and Veracruz. Its peak elevation is 5,636 m. The Sierra Madre Mountains which consist of several smaller ranges, run from northern Mesoamerica south through Costa Rica. The chain is historically volcanic. In central and southern Mexico, a portion of the Sierra Madre chain is known as the Ege Volcanico Transversal, or the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt. There are 83 inactive and active volcanoes within the Sierra Madre range including 11 in Mexico, 37 in Guatemala, 23 in El Salvador, 25 in Nicaragua, and 3 in northwestern Costa Rica. According to the Michigan Technological University, 16 of these are still active. The tallest active volcano is Popocatapetl at 5,452 m. This volcano, which retains its Nahuatl name, is located 70 kilometers southeast of Mexico City. Other volcanoes of note include Tacana on the Mexico-Guatemala border, Tahumulca and Santa Maria in Guatemala, Isalca in El Salvador, Momotombo in Nicaragua, and Arenal in Costa Rica. One important topographic feature is the Isthmus of Tehuantepec a low plateau that breaks up the Sierra Madre chain between the Sierra Madre del Sur to the north and the Sierra Madre de Chiapas to the south. At its highest point, the isthmus is 224 m above mean sea level. This area also represents the shortest distance between the Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific Ocean in Mexico. The distance between the two coasts is roughly 200 km. Although the northern side of the isthmus is swampy and covered with dense jungle, the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, as the lowest and most level point within the Sierra Madre mountain chain, was nonetheless a main transportation, communication, and economic route within Mesoamerica. Outside of the northern Maya lowlands, rivers are common throughout Mesoamerica. Some of the more important ones served as loci of human occupation in the area. The longest river in Mesoamerica is the Usumacinta, which forms in Guatemala at the convergence of the Salinas or Chicxoy and La Passion River and runs north for 970 km 480 km of which are navigable eventually draining into the Gulf of Mexico. Other rivers of note include the Rio Grande de Santiago, the Grijalva River, the Matagua River, the Ulua River, and the Hondo River. The northern Maya lowlands, especially the northern portion of the Yucatan Peninsula, are notable for their nearly complete lack of rivers. Additionally, no lakes exist in the northern peninsula. The main source of water in this area is aquifers that are accessed through natural surface openings called cenotes. With an area of 8,264 km2, Lake Nicaragua is the largest lake in Mesoamerica. 
Lake Chapala is Mexico's largest freshwater lake, but Lake Texcoco is perhaps most well known as the location upon which Tenochtitlan, capital of the Aztec Empire, was founded. Lake Putinitsa, in northern Guatemala, is notable as the location at which the last independent Maya city, Teasal, held out against the Spanish until 1697. Other large lakes include Lake Atitlan, Lake Isabal, Lake Gija, Limo, and Lake Managua. Almost all ecosystems are present in Mesoamerica, the more well known are the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef System, the second largest in the world, and La Mesquicha or rainforest second in size in the Americas only to the Amazonas. The highlands present mixed and coniferous forest. The biodiversity is among the richest in the world, although the number of species in the red list of the IUCN is growing every year. The history of human occupation in Mesoamerica is divided into stages or periods. These are known, with slight variation depending on region, as the Paleo-Indian, the Archaic, the Pre-Classic, the Classic, and the Post-Classic. The last three periods, representing the core of Mesoamerican cultural fluorescence, are further divided into two or three sub-phases. Most of the time following the arrival of the Spanish in the 16th century is classified as the colonial period. The differentiation of early periods generally reflects different configurations of socio-cultural organization that are characterized by increasing socio-political complexity, the adoption of new and different subsistence strategies, and changes in economic organization. The classic period through the post-classic are differentiated by the cyclical crystallization and fragmentation of the various political entities throughout Mesoamerica. The Mesoamerican Paleo-Indian period precedes the advent of agriculture and is characterized by a nomadic hunting and gathering subsistence strategy. Big game hunting, similar to that seen in contemporaneous North America was a large component of the subsistence strategy of the Mesoamerican Paleo-Indian. These sites had obsidian blades and Clovis-style fluted projectile points. The Archaic period is characterized by the rise of incipient agriculture in Mesoamerica. The initial phases of the Archaic involved the cultivation of wild plants, transitioning into informal domestication and culminating with sedentism and agricultural production by the close of the period. Archaic sites include Sipacate in Escuintla, Guatemala, where maize pollen samples date to c. 3500 BC. The well-known Coxcatlan cave site in the valley of Tehuacan, Puebla, which contains over 10,000 Teos Inte cobs and Gila Naquits in Oaxaca represent some of the earliest examples of agriculture in Mesoamerica. The early development of pottery, often seen as a sign of sedentism, has been documented at several sites, including the West Mexican sites of Matancan in Nayarit and Puerto Mark in Guerrero. La Blanca, Ocos, and Ujixt in the Pacific lowlands of Guatemala yielded pottery dated to c. 2500 BC. The first complex civilization to develop in Mesoamerica was that of the Almec, who inhabited the Gulf Coast region of Veracruz throughout the pre-classic period. The main sites of the Almec include San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan, La Venta, and Trace Zapotes. Although specific dates vary, these sites were occupied from roughly 1200 to 400 BC. Remains of other early cultures interacting with the Almec have been found at Takalikabach, Izapa, and Teopantiku in Itlan, and as far south as in Honduras. Research in the Pacific lowlands of Chiapas and Guatemala suggest that Azapa and the Monte Alto culture may have preceded the Almec. 
Radiocarbon samples associated with various sculptures found at the late pre-classic site of Azapa suggest a date of between 1800 and 1500 BC. During the Middle and Late Pre-Classic period, the Maya civilization developed in the southern Maya highlands and lowlands, and at a few sites in the northern Maya lowlands. The earliest Maya sites coalesced after 1000 BC, and include Nakbi, El Mirador, and Saros. Middle to late pre-classic Maya sites include Common Aljuyu, Sivil, Edsna, Koba, Lamanai, Kamshan, Jabil Chaltun, and San Bartolo, among others. The pre-classic in the central Mexican highlands is represented by such sites as Tlapacoya, Tlatelco, and Quiquilco. These sites were eventually superseded by Teotihuacan an important classic era site that eventually dominated economic and interaction spheres throughout Mesoamerica. The settlement of Teotihuacan is dated to the later portion of the late pre-classic, or roughly AD 50. In the Valley of Oaxaca, San Jose Mogote represents one of the oldest permanent agricultural villages in the area, and one of the first to use pottery. During the early and middle pre-classic, the site developed some of the earliest examples of defensive palisades, ceremonial structures, the use of adobe, and hieroglyphic writing. Also of importance, the site was one of the first to demonstrate inherited status, signifying a radical shift in socio-cultural and political structure. San Jose Mogote was eventually overtaken by Monte Alban, the subsequent capital of the Zapotec Empire, during the late Preclassic. The Preclassic in western Mexico, in the states of Nayarit, Jalisco, Colima, and Michoacan, also known as the Occident, is poorly understood. This period is best represented by the thousands of figurines recovered by looters and ascribed to the shaft tomb tradition. Almec Colossal Head No. 3 1200 900 BC Cermic Almec Baby Figure 1200 900 BC Quiquilco 800 600 BC Nakbi, Mid Pre Classic Palace Remains the Mirador Basin. The partly excavated main structure of San Jose Mogote 1500 500 BC. Sedentism based on maize agriculture, the construction of stepped pyramids, the use of two different calendars, vigesimal number system, the use of locally developed pictographic and hieroglyphic writing systems the use of rubber and the practice of the Mesoamerican ballgame, the use of bark paper and agave for ritual purposes and as a medium for writing and the latter also for cooking and clothing, the practice of various forms of ritualistic sacrifice, including human sacrifice, a religious complex. Based on a combination of shamanism and natural deities, and a shared system of symbols, a linguistic area defined by a number of grammatical traits that have spread through the area by diffusion. Mythology and Worldview Sacrifice Auto-sacrifice Human Sacrifice Ball Game Astronomy Symbolism of Space and Time Political and Religious Art Music Footnotes Pacific Lowlands, Cotton and Cochineal, Maya Lowlands and the Gulf Coast, Cacao, Vanilla, Jaguar Skins, Birds and Bird Feathers, Central Mexico, Obsidian, Guatemalan Highlands, Obsidian, Pyrite and Jade from the Matagua River Valley, Coastal Areas, Salt, dry fish, shell, and dyes. Hobnil, Bacab of the East, associated with the color red and the Kenyers, Kintsiknil, Bacab of the North, 
assigned the color white and the mula gears, Zach CIMI, Bacab of the West, associated with the color black and the nine years, Hosanek, Bacab of the South, associated with the color yellow and the Kaak years. East, Crocodile, the Serpent, Water, Cane, and Movement. The East was linked to the world priests and associated with vegetative fertility, or, in other words, tropical exuberance, North, Wind, Death, the Dog, the Jaguar, and Flint. The North contrasts with the East in that it is conceptualized as dry, cold, and oppressive. It is considered to be the nocturnal part of the universe and includes the dwellings of the dead. The dog has a very specific meaning, as it accompanies the deceased during the trip to the lands of the dead and helps them cross the river of death that leads into nothingness, west, the house, the deer, the monkey, the eagle, and rain. The west was associated with the cycles of vegetation, specifically the temperate high plains that experience light rains and the change of seasons, south, rabbit, the lizard, dried herbs, the buzzard, and flowers. It is related on the one hand to the luminous sun and the noon heat, and on the other with rain filled with alcoholic drink. The rabbit, the principal symbol of the West, was associated with farmers and with pulque. Monte Alban Building J in the foreground. 200 BC AD 200. The classic period is marked by the rise and dominance of several polities. The traditional distinction between the early and late classic are marked by their changing fortune and their ability to maintain regional primacy. Of paramount importance are Teotihuacan in central Mexico and Tikal in Guatemala. The early classics temporal limits generally correlate to the main periods of these sites. Monte Alban in Oaxaca is another classic period polity that expanded and flourished during this period, but the Zapotec capital exerted less interregional influence than the other two sites. During the early classic, Teotihuacan participated in and perhaps dominated a far-reaching macroregional interaction network. Architectural and artifact styles epitomized at Teotihuacan were mimicked and adopted at many distant settlements. Pachuca Obsidian, whose trade and distribution is argued to have been economically controlled by Teotihuacan, is found throughout Mesoamerica. Tikal came to dominate much of the southern Maya lowlands politically, economically, and militarily during the early Classic. An exchange network centered at Tikal distributed a variety of goods and commodities throughout southeast Mesoamerica, such as obsidian imported from central Mexico and highland Guatemala, and jade from the Matagua Valley in Guatemala. Tikal was often in conflict with other polities in the Putin Basin, as well as with others outside of it, including Uaxactun, Caracol, Dos Pilas, Naranjo, and Calac Mole. Towards the end of the early Classic, this conflict led to Tikal's military defeat at the hands of Caracol in 562, and a period commonly known as the Tikal Hiatus. Pyramid of the Moon viewed from atop of the Pyramid of the Sunday. Great Goddess of Teotihuacan AD 200-500 a reconstruction of Guachimán tones, flourished from A.D. 200-400. Temple of the Owl, Jibank A.D. 200-600. Mask located on the Temple of the Masks Kohunluk C. A.D. 500. Akansa, A.D. 200-300. The late classic period is characterized as a period of interregional competition and factionalization among the numerous regional polities in the Maya area. This largely resulted from the decrease in Tikal's socio-political and economic power at the beginning of the period. 
It was therefore during this time that other sites rose to regional prominence and were able to exert greater inter-regional influence, including Caracol, Copan, Palenque, and Calac Mole, and Dos Pilas Aguateca and Cancun in the Patex Baytun region of Guatemala. Around 710, Tikal arose again and started to build strong alliances and defeat its worst enemies. In the Maya area, the late classic ended with the so-called Maya Collapse, a transitional period coupling the general depopulation of the southern lowlands and development and fluorescence of centers in the northern lowlands. Main Palace of Palenque, AD 7th Century Kayanich Janab Pakal I of Palenque AD 603-683 Copan Stila Age commissioned by Uaxaklajuhun Ubiya Kayawil AD 695-738 China Island Type Figure AD 650-800 Kakaxtla, Mural Depicting the Birdman AD 650-900 Kochikalko Temple of the Feathered Serpent, A.D. 65900 Generally applied to the Maya area, the terminal classic roughly spans the time between A.D. 800-850 and C.A. A.D. 1000. Overall, it generally correlates with the rise to prominence of Puke settlements in the northern Maya lowlands, so named after the hills in which they are mainly found. Puk settlements are specifically associated with a unique architectural style that represents a technological departure from previous construction techniques. Major Puk sites include Ushmal, Sale, Labna, Kaba, and Oxkintok. While generally concentrated within the area in and around the Puk Hills, the style has been documented as far away as at Chichen Itza to the east and Edsna to the south. Chichen Itza was originally thought to have been a post-classic site in the northern Maya lowlands. Research over the past few decades has established that it was first settled during the early-slash-late classic transition but rose to prominence during the terminal classic and early post-classic. During its apogee, this widely known site economically and politically dominated the northern lowlands. Its participation in the Circumpeninsular Exchange Route, possible through its port site of Isla Cerritos, allowed Chichen Itza to remain highly connected to areas such as Central Mexico and Central America. The apparent Mexicanization of architecture at Chichen Itza led past researchers to believe that Chichen Itza existed under the control of a Toltec empire. Chronological data refutes this early interpretation, and it is now known that Chichen Itza predated the Toltec. Mexican architectural styles are now used as an indicator of strong economic and ideological ties between the two regions. Governor's Palace Rear View and Details, AD 10th Century, Ushmal. Kaj Poop, AD 70th 10th Centuries Kaba. Chichen Itza, Temple of the Jaguars AD 900-1000 Chichen Itza, Temple of Three Dintels AD 600-1000 Ushmal, Nunnery Quadrangle, AD 10th Century Sale, Three-Story Palace, AD 600-900 The post-classic is, like the late classic, characterized by the cyclical crystallization and fragmentation of various polities. The main Maya centers were located in the northern lowlands. Following Chichen Itza, whose political structure collapsed during the early post-classic, Mayapan rose to prominence during the middle post-classic and dominated the north for c. 200 years. After Mayapan's fragmentation, political structure in the northern lowlands revolved around large towns or city-states, such as Oxcutscab and Tiho, that competed with one another. Tanina, in the Chiapas Highlands, 
and common Aljuyu in the central Guatemala highlands, were important southern highland Maya centers. The latter site, common Aljuyu, is one of the longest occupied sites in Mesoamerica and was continuously inhabited from c. 800 BC to around AD 1200. Other important highland Maya groups include the Kayak of Udatlan, the Mam in Zaculehu, the Pokemam in Mixco Viejo, and the Kakaikal at Ixinch in the Guatemalan highlands. The Papil resided in El Salvador, while the Chorti were in eastern Guatemala and northwestern Honduras. In central Mexico, the early portion of the post-classic correlates with the rise of the Toltec and an empire based at their capital, Tula. Cholula, initially an important early classic center contemporaneous with Teotihuacan, maintained its political structure and continued to function as a regionally important center during the post-classic. The latter portion of the post-classic is generally associated with the rise of the Mexica and the Aztec Empire. One of the more commonly known cultural groups in Mesoamerica, the Aztec politically dominated nearly all of central Mexico, the Gulf Coast, Mexico's southern Pacific Coast, Oaxaca, and Guerrero. The Tarascans were located in Michoacan and Guerrero. With their capital at Tzintzintzan, the Tarascan state was one of the few to actively and continuously resist Aztec domination during the late post-classic. Other important post-classic cultures in Mesoamerica include the Totonac along the eastern coast. The Huastec resided north of the Totonac, mainly in the modern-day states of Tamaulipas and northern Veracruz. The Mistec and Zapotec cultures, centered at Mitla and Zachila respectively, inhabited Oaxaca. The post-classic ends with the arrival of the Spanish and their subsequent conquest of the Aztec between 1519 and 1521. Many other cultural groups did not acquiesce until later. For example, Maya groups in the Putin area, including the Itza at Teasal and the Kauhuje at Zakpatan, remained independent until 1697. Some Mesoamerican cultures never achieved dominant status or left impressive archaeological remains but are nevertheless noteworthy. These include the Otomi, Mizzok groups, the northern uto aztecan groups, often referred to as the Shishimika, that include the Kora and Huacal, the Chantales, the Huavs, and the Papil, Zincan and Lenkan peoples of Central America. Palace of Columns, Mitla, Oaxaca 12th century. Hujitla Defensive Wall, built c. 1200. Detail of page 20 from the Codex Zushnetal, 14-15th century. Bronze objects from Tzintzintzan, 15th century. Aztec Sun Stone, early 16th century. By roughly 6000 BC, hunter-gatherers living in the highlands and lowlands of Mesoamerica began to develop agricultural practices with early cultivation of squash and chili. The earliest example of maize dates to c. 4000 BC and comes from Gila Naquits, a cave in Oaxaca. Earlier maize samples have been documented at the Los Ladrones cave site in Panama, c. 5500 BC. Slightly thereafter, other crops began to be cultivated by the semi-agrarian communities throughout Mesoamerica. Although maize is the most common domesticate, the common bean, tepary bean, scarlet runner bean, jicama, tomato, and squash all became common cultivates by 3500 BC. At the same time, cotton, yucca, and agave were exploited for fibers and textile materials. By 2000 BC, 
corn was the staple crop in the region and remains so through modern times. The ramon or breadnut tree was an occasional substitute for maize in producing flour. Fruit was also important in the daily diet of Mesoamerican cultures. Some of the main ones consumed include avocado, papaya, guava, mami, zapote, and anona. Mesoamerica lacked animals suitable for domestication, most notably domesticated large ungulates the lack of draft animals to assist in transportation is one notable difference between Mesoamerica and the cultures of the South American Andes. Other animals, including the duck, dogs, and turkey, were domesticated. Turkey was the first, occurring around 3500 BC. Dogs were the primary source of animal protein in ancient Mesoamerica, and dog bones are common in midden deposits throughout the region. Societies of this region did hunt certain wild species to complement their diet. These animals included deer, rabbit, birds, and various types of insects. They also hunted in order to gain luxury items such as feline fur and bird plumage. Mesoamerican cultures that lived in the lowlands and coastal plains settled down in agrarian communities somewhat later than did highland cultures due to the fact that there was a greater abundance of fruits and animals in these areas, which made a hunter-gatherer lifestyle more attractive. Fishing also was a major provider of food to lowland and coastal Mesoamericans creating a further disincentive to settle down in permanent communities. Ceremonial centers were the nuclei of Mesoamerican settlements. The temples provided spatial orientation, which was imparted to the surrounding town. The cities with their commercial and religious centers were always political entities, somewhat similar to the European city-state, and each person could identify himself with the city in which he lived. The ceremonial centers were always built to be visible. The pyramids were meant to stand out from the rest of the city, to represent its gods and their powers. Another characteristic feature of the ceremonial centers is historic layers. All of the ceremonial edifices were built in various phases, one on top of the other, to the point that what we now see is usually the last stage of construction. Ultimately, the ceremonial centers were the architectural translation of the identity of each city, as represented by the veneration of their gods and masters. Stele were common public monuments throughout Mesoamerica, and served to commemorate notable successes, events, and dates associated with the rulers and nobility of the various sites. Given that Mesoamerica was broken into numerous and diverse ecological niches, none of the societies that inhabited the area were self-sufficient. For this reason, from the last centuries of the Archaic period onward, regions compensated for the environmental inadequacies by specializing in the extraction of certain abundant natural resources and then trading them for necessary unavailable resources through established commercial trade networks. The following is a list of some of the specialized resources traded from the various Mesoamerican subregions and environmental contexts. Agriculturally based people historically divide the year into four seasons. These included the two solstices and the two equinoxes, which could be thought of as the four directional pillars that support the year. These four times of the year were, and still are, important as they indicate seasonal changes that directly impact the lives of Mesoamerican agriculturalists. The Maya closely observed and duly recorded the seasonal markers. They prepared almanacs recording past and recent solar and lunar eclipses, the phases of the Moon, the periods of Venus and Mars, the movements of various other planets, and conjunctions of celestial bodies. These almanacs also made future predictions concerning celestial events. These tables are remarkably accurate 
given the technology available, and indicate a significant level of knowledge among Maya astronomers. Among the many types of calendars the Maya maintained, the most important include a 260-day cycle, a 360-day cycle or year, a 365-day cycle or year, a lunar cycle, and a Venus cycle, which tracked the synodic period of Venus. Maya of the European contact period said that knowing the past aided in both understanding the present and predicting the future. The 260-day cycle was a calendar to govern agriculture, observe religious holidays, mark the movements of celestial bodies and memorialize public officials. The 260-day cycle was also used for divination, and to name newborns. The names given to the days, months, and years in the Mesoamerican calendar came, for the most part, from animals, flowers, heavenly bodies, and cultural concepts that held symbolic significance in Mesoamerican culture. This calendar was used throughout the history of Mesoamerican by nearly every culture. Even today, several Maya groups in Guatemala, including the Kayak, Kuiki, Kakaikal, and the Miz people of Oaxaca continue using modernized forms of the Mesoamerican calendar. The Mesoamerican scripts deciphered to date are logosyllabic combining the use of logograms with a syllabary, and they are often called hieroglyphic scripts. Five or six different scripts have been documented in Mesoamerica, but archaeological dating methods, and a certain degree of self-interest, create difficulties in establishing priority and thus the forebear from which the others developed. The best documented and deciphered Mesoamerican writing system, and therefore the most widely known, is the classic Maya script. Others include the Almec, Zapotec, and AP Almec slash Ismian writing systems. An extensive Mesoamerican literature has been conserved partly in indigenous scripts and partly in the post-invasion transcriptions into Latin script. The other glyphic writing systems of Mesoamerica, and their interpretation, have been subject to much debate. One important ongoing discussion regards whether non-Maya Mesoamerican texts can be considered examples of true writing or whether non-Maya Mesoamerican texts are best understood as pictographic conventions used to express ideas, specifically religious ones, but not representing the phonetics of the spoken language in which they were read. Mesoamerican writing is found in several mediums, including large stone monuments such as stele, carved directly onto architecture, carved or painted over stucco, and on pottery. No pre-Columbian Mesoamerican society is known to have had widespread literacy, and literacy was probably restricted to particular social classes, including scribes, painters, merchants, and the nobility. The Mesoamerican book was typically written with brush and colored inks on a paper prepared from the inner bark of the ficus amicus. The book consisted of a long strip of the prepared bark, which was folded like a screen fold to define individual pages. The pages were often covered and protected by elaborately carved book boards. Some books were composed of square pages while others were composed of rectangular pages. Mesoamerican arithmetic treated numbers as having both literal and symbolic value, the result of the dualistic nature that characterized Mesoamerican ideology. As mentioned, the Mesoamerican numbering system was vigesimal. In representing numbers, a series of bars and dots were employed. Dots had a value of 1, and bars had a value of 5. This type of arithmetic was combined with a symbolic numerology, too was related to origins, as all origins can be thought of as doubling, three was related to household fire, four was linked to the four corners of the universe, five expressed instability, nine pertained to the underworld and the night, 
13 was the number for light, 20 for abundance, and 400 for infinity. The concept of zero was also used, and its representation at the late pre-classic occupation of trace zapotes is one of the earliest uses of zero in human history. Maize played an important role in Mesoamerican feasts due to its symbolic meaning and abundance. Fray Bernardino de Sehagan collected extensive information on plants, animals, soil types, among other matters from native informants in Book 11, The Earthly Things, of the 12 volume General History of the Things of New Spain, known as the Florentine Codex, compiled in the third quarter of the 16th century. An earlier work, the Badianus Manuscript or Libellus de Medicina Libus Indurum Herbis is another Aztec codex with written text and illustrations collected from the indigenous viewpoint. The shared traits in Mesoamerican mythology are characterized by their common basis as a religion that, although in many Mesoamerican groups developed into complex polytheistic religious systems, retained some shamanistic elements. The great breadth of the Mesoamerican pantheon of deities is due to the incorporation of ideological and religious elements from the first primitive religion of fire, earth, water, and nature. Astral divinities were adopted and represented in anthropomorphic, zoomorphic, and anthroposomorphic sculptures, and in day-to-day -day objects. The qualities of these gods and their attributes changed with the passage of time and with cultural influences from other Mesoamerican groups. The gods are at once three, creator, preserver, and destroyer, and at the same time just one. An important characteristic of Mesoamerican religion was the dualism among the divine entities. The gods represented the confrontation between opposite poles, the positive, exemplified by light, the masculine, force, war, the sun, etc., and the negative, exemplified by darkness, the feminine, repose, peace, the moon, etc. The typical Mesoamerican cosmology sees the world as separated into a day world watched by the sun and a night world watched by the moon. More importantly, the three superposed levels of the world are united by a Saba tree. The geographic vision is also tied to the cardinal points. Certain geographical features are linked to different parts of this cosmovision. Thus mountains and tall trees connect the middle and upper worlds, caves connect the middle and nether worlds. Generally, Sacrifice can be divided into two types, auto-sacrifice and human sacrifice. The different forms of sacrifice are reflected in the imagery used to evoke ideological structure and socio-cultural organization in Mesoamerica. In the Maya area, for example, steel depict bloodletting rituals performed by ruling elites, eagles, and jaguars devouring human hearts, jade circles or necklaces that represented hearts and plants and flowers that symbolized both nature and the blood that provided life. Imagery also showed pleas for rain or pleas for blood, with the same intention to replenish the divine energy. Auto-sacrifice, also called bloodletting, is the ritualized practice of drawing blood from oneself. It is commonly seen or represented through iconography as performed by ruling elites in highly ritualized ceremonies, but it was easily practiced in mundane socio-cultural contexts. The act was typically performed with obsidian prismatic blades or stingray spines, and blood was drawn from piercing or cutting the tongue, earlobes, and slash or genitals. Another form of auto-sacrifice was conducted by pulling a rope with attached thorns through the tongue or earlobes. The blood produced was then collected on paper held in a bowl. Auto-sacrifice was not limited to male rulers, 
as their female counterparts often performed these ritualized activities. They are typically shown performing the rope and thorns technique. A recently discovered queen's tomb in the classic Maya site of Waka had a ceremonial stingray spine placed in her genital area, suggesting that women also performed bloodletting in their genitalia. Sacrifice had great importance in the social and religious aspects of Mesoamerican culture. First, it showed death transformed into the divine. Death is the consequence of a human sacrifice, but it is not the end, it is but the continuation of the cosmic cycle. Death creates life divine energy is liberated through death and returns to the gods, who are then able to create more life. Secondly, it justifies war, since the most valuable sacrifices are obtained through conflict. The death of the warrior is the greatest sacrifice and gives the gods the energy to go about their daily activities, such as the bringing of rain. Warfare and capturing prisoners became a method of social advancement and a religious cause. Finally, it justifies the control of power by the two ruling classes, the priests and the warriors. The priests controlled the religious ideology, and the warriors supplied the sacrifices. The Mesoamerican ball game was a sport with ritual associations played for over 3,000 years by nearly all pre Columbian peoples of Mesoamerica. The sport had different versions in different places during the millennia, and a modern version of the game, Dolama, continues to be played in a few places. Over 1,300 ball courts have been found throughout Mesoamerica. They vary considerably in size, but they all feature long narrow alleys with side walls to bounce the balls against. The rules of the ball game are not known, but it was probably similar to volleyball, where the object is to keep the ball in play. In the most well-known version of the game, the players struck the ball with their hips, although some versions used forearms or employed rackets, bats, or hand stones. The ball was made of solid rubber, and weighed up to 4 kilograms or more, with sizes that differed greatly over time or according to the version played. While the game was played casually for simple recreation, including by children and perhaps even women, the game also had important ritual aspects, and major formal ball games were held as ritual events, often featuring human sacrifice. Mesoamerican astronomy included a broad understanding of the cycles of planets and other celestial bodies. Special importance was given to the Sun, Moon, and Venus as the morning and evening star. Observatories were built at some sites, including the Round Observatory at Sable and the Observatorio at Cochicalco. Often, the architectural organization of Mesoamerican sites was based on precise calculations derived from astronomical observations. Well-known examples of these include the El Castillo Pyramid at Chichen Itza and the Observatorio at Cochicalco. A unique and common architectural complex found among many Mesoamerican sites are E-groups, which are aligned so as to serve as astronomical observatories. The name of this complex is based on Uaxactun S Group E, the first known observatory in the Maya area. Perhaps the earliest observatory documented in Mesoamerica is that of the Monte Alto culture. This complex consisted of three plain stele and a temple oriented with respect to the Pleiades. It has been argued that among Mesoamerican societies the concepts of space and time are associated with the four cardinal compass points and linked together by the calendar. Dates or events were always tied to a compass direction, and the calendar specified the symbolic geographical characteristic peculiar to that period. Resulting from the significance held by the cardinal directions, many Mesoamerican architectural features, if not entire settlements, 
were planned and oriented with respect to directionality. In Maya cosmology, each cardinal point was assigned a specific color and a specific jaguar deity. They are as follows. Later cultures such as the Kakaikal and Kaik maintain the association of cardinal directions with each color, but utilized different names. Among the Aztec, the name of each day was associated with a cardinal point, and each cardinal direction was associated with a group of symbols. Below are the symbols and concepts associated with each direction. Mesoamerican artistic expression was conditioned by ideology and generally focused on themes of religion and slash or socio-political power. This is largely based on the fact that most works that survived the Spanish conquest were public monuments. These monuments were typically erected by rulers who sought to visually legitimize their socio-cultural and political position, by doing so. They intertwined their lineage, personal attributes, and achievements, and legacy with religious concepts. As such, these monuments were specifically designed for public display and took many forms, including steel, sculpture, architectural reliefs, and other types of architectural elements. Other themes expressed include tracking time, glorifying the city, and veneration of the gods all of which were tied to explicitly aggrandizing the abilities and the reign of the ruler who commissioned the artwork. <laughs>